second of our user experience design talks. In this one here, we're going to have a look at the, the importance of providing a good visual structure within our interface designs. So we'll start off first of all with how we, as, as people, see structure. And we're not talking here about people looking at something and contemplating and thinking about the structure. We're talking about how our visual systems and how our brains automatically go out of their way to, to seek structure. They try to impose a certain form of visual structure on the world. And understanding that will help us then in terms of how we go about providing and, and communicating structure through our interfaces. So we'll start off first of all looking at the Gestalt principles. Uh, they're about a hundred years old. They actually were developed by uh, German psychologists back in the 1920s. And they describe, they, they highlight how people tend to perceive visual elements uh, based on how objects are positioned relative to one another or their properties in relation uh, to one another. So we'll have a look at a um, a number of them reasonably quickly because I just want to sort of flag up that there's a lot of psychology behind this and then we'll go on to providing some um, guidance I suppose or some tips on, on what this means for us as interface designers. So start off the first one which is the notion of proximity and if you look at the the different colored shapes over on the right hand side of the screen uh, it's probable that uh, when you're looking at this, you see three rows of purple stars and you see three columns of orange stars. And the only difference between them is in terms of their spacing. And the relative spacing between them provides a cue to our brain, depending, and that, that is then used by the brain to chunk these things together. So because of our purple stars, that they are more closely uh, aligned on the x-axis, we group them along that axis. And for the uh, orange stars, they're more closely uh, aligned on the y-axis, they're more separation along the x. So again, that uh, defines how we actually group them. That also applies at the bottom. So at the bottom, we have mixtures. We, we have black circles and orange circles and we have some groupings where there's a mixture of black and orange circles within them but when we're looking at that we generally see those as four separate groupings of eight circles just in some of the groupings we, we have a mixture of, of black and orange together so we use the visual spacing between objects to automatically impose an interpretation upon it. And you can probably see based on this that if I want to, to design an interface that contains a number of different controls and I want to group those controls together so that I have a related grouping of controls, then their visual spacing and how they're set out is going to be the primary determinant that will help the user see or group the different elements together. Um, we'll go through a number of other of the, the GASAP principles in the next few slides reasonably quickly, but again, all of them have principles that can apply to how it is we design our interfaces. Next one up is the notion of similarity. Um, so, so the objects that are similar in appearance appear grouped, all other things being equal. And you can see a, a few examples here of the, the Christmas tree, or we have different um, rows. Of, of stars, but the hollow stars are perceived to be grouped together. Uh, so again, we interpreted that as a group as opposed to, uh, so for example, four different uh, columns uh, with, with a different pattern of, of solid and hollow stars within it. Continuity is another one of the principles. Uh, the IBM uh, logo is quite famous, so we perceive it as, as IBM as opposed to a large collection of, of line segments. And if you have a look at the two crossed lines, well, we generally perceive that as an orange and a purple line with a white circle on top of them, as opposed to a circle from which we have four line segments emerging. Closure is another interesting one. Uh, we 
try or our brain is, is is wired up to try to close open figures so that we perceive them as whole objects so the the zebra that we have here we, we quite easily see it as a zebra even though there is no border surrounding it and uh, if you look at the the, the example just uh, between the two fragments of text um, so there we're, we're inclined to actually see a triangle there there almost there appears to be a triangle there's definitely a triangle there there's no lines or not, nothing at all that actually would visibly um, define that, that triangle in terms of what we've committed down to the piece of paper. Rather, it is visually introduced by the brain. The brain thinks there must be an object there, so I'm going to see it as if there is an object there. Symmetry is another one. Uh, so depending on, on how we look at the X, uh, we're inclined to view that as two straight lines uh, that are, are, are drawn together. That's a, somehow a more simple way, a less uh, complex way than if we view it as, as two angled lines that we have fitted together. And likewise with the, the braces, the square and curly braces at the bottom, again but we'll clump them together in a way that is um, to our brain that will reduce the overall complexity. Generally, we'll chunk it into the most simple form, or what we perceive to be the most simple form. Figure grind's another one that when we look at something, we generally are driven to, to have the notion of foreground and background. Foreground being the objects that we perceive as being important within that particular scene. That's generally the ones in that attracts our attention and everything else becomes the, the background. Uh, you've got an example down here that uh, in terms of looking at the different coloured squares, depending on how it's presented, in some cases we, we may see that as um, if it's a foreground element with a hole cut out or a background element with a smaller square uh, in front of it. Common fate is the last one we want to look at. Uh, if we have a bunch of objects and they are moving together, then we generally perceive them as being grouped or related uh, together. Okay, so a few principles that have been known for quite some time. If we are to take this and to apply it to how we design our interfaces, um, what we should be thinking about is providing a good, clear visual structure that the user is able to, to look at and to quite naturally, naturally mean that this is how we would normally interpret things uh, and base our structure so that we help the user um, naturally arrive at whatever it is we want to communicate to them. Good way of doing that is a visual hierarchy. Uh, so there we can separate information into different sections and subsections. And the next few slides are going to have some examples of information that is presented in different ways. And you'll see that if we get the right visual structure, quite often the right visual hierarchy, it actually will make it easier for us to digest and to understand the information, which makes it easier for us to use the program or the app as end users. Um, Visually structuring it then into hierarchy, we want to make sure that we have labels or some ways or icons or whatever of identifying what each section is about. And that will then provide or permit the user to quite quickly scan through to look for something that's relevant to his or her needs and then to focus on that particular bit. So main benefit of having a visual hierarchy is that we permit the user to quickly scan through and to focus in on the section that is of uh, interest or relevance uh, to, to them. Let's give you a couple of examples. Uh, so in both the cases here, the text is identical. There's no change at all in the text. The only thing that's changed is how we present that text. So on the left-hand side, it's presented as, as a title and then a body of text. And if you were looking for some information within that, you don't really have any other option than to start at the top and try to scan down, down straight to the bottom and read it as quickly as you can. The example on the right-hand side, we have separated this into a visual hierarchy. So you can see there's still text, but depending on, on how we set that text out, we can provide a hierarchy to it. Uh, we've done that um, by... Um, 
grouping it into three different areas. So we've got size, prominence, content, relationships. And again, by providing those headings, it enables the user to quite quickly see, oh, there's three main bits here. I can look at the top to see if it's relevant to me. If I think it is, maybe I'm not interested in size, so I know I can skip over that whole paragraph. If I am interested in, say, prominence, then I know I should read that paragraph. So by providing that structure, it makes it much easier to see what is there, the content that is there uh, at a glance, uh, and then for me to decide, do I need to delve into it or can I simply skip over it? Here's some more examples, um, again, where we want to present information to, to a user. Uh, the one on the top right is where we have booked a flight. And you can see we're using sort of a wordy form on the top as, as providing the pertinent information about what you're booked on, where is it departing to, arriving at, and the dates and the times. And we have exactly the same information on the bottom where we have streamlined it. Uh, we've taken out the key core information. We've grouped them together. And you can see there we are using some notion of, of chunking. So the depart and arrive, we've grouped them together. We can then link them in with the two different times and the dates. And it's much more easier for the user to, to scan this information to get the relevant information from it. The example at the bottom is of uh, a mortgage summary. Um, in both cases, same information. Um, but in the example on the left-hand side, we've set it out in a way that doesn't clearly communicate a structure or link them together. It seems to be some sort of tabular uh, collection of data. And the user has to think about, well, monthly payments, what, what figure am I linking that into? The example on the right-hand side makes it clear, makes it explicit in terms of what um, breakdown there is and what values are then associated with those different elements. So in all cases, similar, same types of information, but by getting the right structure, we make it very much more easy for the user to be able to digest, to understand, to interpret that information. And that's a good thing. That's what we want to, to try to achieve within our interfaces. So main uh, sort of summary in this is, is that we should support scanning. It's what we try to do. So in our, in, in our designs, we should try to support it. We shouldn't uh, disrupt it. That would be a bad thing to do. So help the user to easily separate what is relevant to their goals from what is not. That's providing a clear hierarchy that permits the user to scan down through it. So we want to structure information in that hierarchy. We want to emphasize the key points of information that enables the user to, to parse through it. And for complex hierarchies, you get into using lists and tables and other ways of managing that complexity. Um, ideally, we want to provide some notion of a clear visual uh, flow. We should think about if the user is scanning um, a, a particular screen or page or whatever within our application, where are they likely to start looking? What way is the eyes likely to go? Do we provide a nice flow down through that hierarchy? So summary in this, uh, we were effectively hardwired to see certain forms of visual structure. We, we, we will do and see those structure effortlessly. Uh, we quite often want to scan information. We're interested in one particular thing. We're not interested in other things. So the ability to scan information to quickly find it is something that's going to make us happy users, as opposed to have to trudge through a lot of stuff that we're not that interested in. And our designs, if we want to do this, then we should make use of the fact that we are hardwired to see things in certain ways. We should design with that in mind to actually permit or enable our structures to be visually apparent and to be easily scanned. That's all we want to say here. Again, if you look at the books on directed reading we had from the first lecture, you'll find lots of additional reading on that. Um, next one in this series, we're going to go on to have a look at reading and how uh, we read words and interpret what it is we are reading.